Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Rostin's Reviews. My name is Mr. Rostin, 74 social studies teacher here at BMS, and I'm very, very excited to bring you another episode. So, another week down in U.S. history, and we're moving and grooving. This episode is going to be a little bit shorter because I can't share any of the usual information because some of you are still finishing the assessment. However, what I will do for you today is I will go through the parts of an essay, all right? So that way you guys can kind of review and remember and kind of use this as a guide to help you. So if you remember for our introductions, we use what's called an ABC introduction. It's an A for attention grabber, B for background information, and C for claim statement. So if you remember back to last year when I taught you about ABC, I taught you the way Michael Jackson sang the song ABC with the Jackson 5. ABC, it's easy as one, two, three. So if you remember, A, attention grabber, is one sentence. Background information is two sentences. And your claim statement has three reasons. ABC, one, two, three. So if you remember, what I like to do and the way I like to teach the attention grabber is to either use a question or an interesting fact or statement about your topic. So for example, for our Boston Massacre <clears throat> argumentative essay, you could use the question that we're trying to answer as your attention grabber. That would just make life easier, wouldn't it? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Anyway, so then you're going to share two pieces of background information about the topic. So this year, we talked about how we could use our who, what, where, when, or why, our five W's, and use that to help us to give important information on our topic about the Boston Massacre. You could talk about where the incident took place. You could talk about why it happened. You could talk about who was involved. You could talk about what actually happened there. So make sure that in your essay, in your background info, that you use the five W's to your advantage. Then you need to do a claim statement. So if you remember, last year we taught you TTQA plus your side of the argument plus your reasons. So and that's the same again this year. So you're gonna turn the question around, who was to blame for the Boston Massacre? So you're gonna turn that question around. You're gonna choose your side. Was it the British Army? Or the American colonist, and then you're going to give three reasons why that side was to blame. All right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So once you are done with your introduction, you then moved on to your appeal paragraph. Now, for this time, I had you write two. Why? Because I'm only grading one of them. And if you mess up on the first one, I have given you the opportunity to do better on the second one, and we'll pretend like the first one doesn't exist. Or if you did really good on the first one and not so good on the second one, I can just grade the first one and make sure that you are where you need to be. All right. So when we write peels, remember peel stands for point, evidence, elaboration, and link. So our point sentence is our reason why our side of the argument is correct. So we TTQA the question. And then for our reason, we use one of the reasons that we put in our claim statement. Hopefully, knock on wood, it is the same as the first reason in your claim, right? So the best part about the claim statement is that it lists all your reasons in order that you wrote about them in your appeal paragraphs. Wild concept, isn't it? I know. So you've written your point, you've given the reader your reason why your side of the argument is correct. Then for E, which we know stands for evidence, you're going to cite a piece of evidence, meaning you're going to give the title of the source. Then you're gonna put a comma and a quotation mark because you're letting the reader know that it's not your words anymore. This is someone else's. And you're going to write down from the text exactly as it's written. Remember, you're not allowed to paraphrase, you're not allowed to leave out words, you're not allowed to change sentences. That's unethical. That's not what we do as historians. 
we give the reader the entire piece of evidence. That way they can come to their own conclusion with hopefully a little help from your analysis. Okay? So you cited your evidence, you've quoted it properly, you make sure to put a quotation mark at the end of the quote so that way the reader knows we're going back to your own words. Right? Now we have our explanation and elaboration. Now this one, we need two sentences. Because remember, the first part is we're going to explain what the evidence means in our own words. Right? You are the expert. You have been doing the research on the Boston Massacre. You've read all the sources. You've highlighted the evidence. You are the expert. You are letting the reader know your analysis. So you're explaining what the evidence means in your own words. That way it makes it easier for the reader to understand. Then you're going to elaborate. What does that mean? You're going to show the reader how your evidence proves your point. How does this piece of text evidence show that the American colonists were to blame for the Boston Massacre? Or on the other side, how does this piece of evidence show that the British soldiers were to blame for the Boston Massacre, right? And then once you've done that, you're going to link it. Now remember, for those of you who had me in sixth grade, this is like the ice cream sundae, right? We have our peel, our point sentence, which is our ice cream. We have our evidence, which is our toppings, like, you know, the hot fudge and the sprinkles. We have our explanation and elaboration, which is our whipped cream. And then our link is like the cherry on top. It's the best part. So the link is used to remind the reader what you argued about, right? Your side of the argument and why it's correct. It's one sentence long. And really, in all honesty, all you have to do is go back to your point sentence and copy your reason down. I'm not asking you to do brain surgery here or to make something new. All you gotta do is remind the reader, summarize your side of the argument. And that's it, friends. That's all you got to do. That's ABC and Peel. So next time when we go over this, because I'm sure we're going to do this again, I will be able to provide you an example of an ABC intro and a Peel, blank Peel, and we'll go through it piece by piece. But again, this should be review. We already did this last year. And I know for certain that your sixth grade teachers taught you this last year. How do I know? Because remember, I was one of them. You silly little children. So, that's what we did in U.S. history. We learned about the Boston Massacre. We looked at six different sources, three of which were from the British side, three of which were from the American side, and then you had to decide who was to blame for the Boston Massacre. What I will tell you is that we are going to be practicing some claim statements because, good lordy, that's something we need to work on. You guys are killing the peels just from what I've seen so far, but we need to work on claim statements, but that's for another time. All right, friends. So some important announcements. One, we don't have school on Monday. Sad face. Indigenous People's Day, go enjoy the day, go do something with your family, go outside, have a day. All right. Uh, announcement number two, uh, our new rotating schedule starts on Tuesday. So what does this mean? This means we are starting to add a seventh day to our rotation. We currently have six. Now we are going to have seven. And day seven is just, you know, adding another day to our regular scheduled programming. All right. Not much has changed, right? The schedule isn't changing. Your classes aren't changing. Your teachers aren't changing. Everything's the same. It's just like I explained to you today during WIN. So there's no need to freak out, man. All right. Everything's going to be okay. It's literally all the same. Instead of just going from day six to day one, we're adding day seven. That is literally it. All right, friends. That's it. I hope you all have a great weekend. Be kind to one another. Peace be with you and with you. Rostin out.